Today we're going to be working on the chain rule continued. So we're building on stuff that we already knew before. So in our first example, we are asked to differentiate y equals negative 7 over the quantity 2t minus 3 squared. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to write y as a product. So hopefully you can see that this is negative 7. And we can rewrite our division by 2t minus 3 as multiplication of 2t minus 3 to the negative 2 power. So now, because we have a constant and then a composite function, right, 2t minus 3 to the negative 2, we can use the chain rule. So, I am hoping that some of you are at the point that you can do this more quickly. Okay, so I'm going to do it with the shortcut over here, and then we're going to do the work to see if you have to do it by the long hand. So y prime, I can see that I have negative 7 and then something to the negative 2 power. So my power rule says I can take the exponent and multiply it by the coefficient. So negative 2 times negative 7 is 14. Then I'm going to take the expression, and I'm going to lower the exponent by 1. So this would be negative 3. And then I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 2t minus 3 is 2. So then when I simplify, 14 times 2 would be 28. And I'm going to rewrite my negative exponent as a positive exponent. By moving it to the denominator. Okay, so my derivative of my given function y is 28 over the expression 2t minus 3 cubed. Like I said, I'm hoping many of you are at the shortcut stage. If you're not, you are thinking u would be 2t minus 3, right? That's our inner function. So u prime would be 2. Our f of u would be negative 7 u to the negative 2. So our f prime of u would be 14 u to the negative 3 times u prime. So now if we were to substitute that in, we would have our 14 u to the negative 3 times our u prime. Okay, so we get the same answer. If you still need to do this, that's fine, okay? If anything, on a quiz or a test, I can probably give you more partial credit if you write this out. But if you are doing this correctly, if you're getting them right, if you understand the process and are ready to move on to the shortcut, you can move right to here. All right, let's move on to example two. So this time we wanna find the derivative with respect to x of y equals x squared times the square root of one minus x squared. So I can see here that I have a product. I can't simplify this because of the square root, okay? I can't, do dis I can't use the distributive property. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the product rule. So first I want to rewrite my y. So I have y equals x squared times 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. So now I want you to take a second and determine f and f prime and g and g prime. So pause the video now and determine those. Okay, so I saw my first function was x squared. Its derivative is 2x. My second function is 1 minus x squared to the 1 half power. I use the power rule and the chain rule here. 1 half times my function I reduced the exponent by 1, and then I multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative of 1 minus x squared was negative 2x. Because I know I'm going to use this in other places, I want to simplify this as much as I can. So negative 2 times 1 half was negative 1, and times my x. So now we're just substituting in my y prime is equal to my derivative of my first function, times my second function plus 
my first function times the derivative of my second function. So I always think it's a good idea to simplify here if I can. So I see that I have 2x. I can't distribute that because of the exponent of 1 half. And then I can see x squared times negative x is negative x cubed and 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. So this part here is always sort of tricky for people. I can see that I have a 1 minus x squared factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out that 1 minus x squared factor. And then I want to pull out the smallest exponent. So negative 1 half is smaller. Right? So I can see that I can pull out that. I also see that I have an x in both of my terms. So now when I factor that out, I'm pulling out, I'm not pulling out the 2, so I still have that 2 there. And then if I am factoring out a 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half, that means I'm taking this and I'm subtracting the exponents. So 1 half minus negative 1 half is 1 half plus 1 half, which means this is this factor to the first power. And then here I factored out that whole expression, so I'm left with x cubed. Now, the beginning, the factored part, is staying exactly the same. And I'm going to simplify in here. Since this is 1 minus x squared to the first, I can distribute. I get 2 minus 2x squared minus x cubed. So now again, this becomes x times 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times 2 minus 3 sorry, 2 minus 2x squared I should have seen there. Sorry, I'm making you guys do too much work. This can't be simplified any further. So let me erase real quick. Sorry about that. So now we just want to rewrite with a positive exponent. So this becomes, I still have x in the numerator. I have 2 minus 2x squared minus x cubed. And this is going to be over 1 minus x squared to the negative 1, to the 1 half. Sorry for my mistake there. So... I can now write this as 